All amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. With the Spain News Update, we'll take a look at some of the main stories that have been featuring in the press here in Spain, and we'll also take a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos on the channel recently. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's buying me a coffee through the Super Thanks option on YouTube, members to the YouTube channel, or my longer-term supporters on Patreon. Thank you very much for that support. Now straight into the news and Prime Minister Sanchez making headlines today because he's throwing money at education, mathematics and reading comprehension to be exact. As we can read here, Sanchez promises a plan with reinforcement classes and fewer students per classroom in mathematics and language classes. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez announced at a PSOE event that the government will start a major plan to help students do better in mathematics and reading comprehension. This is after Spain got poor results in the PISA report. According to government sources, the plan will have three main parts. First, they will lower the number of students in each class. This will make classes more focused and teachers can give more attention to each student. The second part is to provide extra teachers for students who have more trouble. These students can get extra classes outside of regular school hours. Basically, this means that parents of kids who struggle won't have to look for a tutoring centre outside of school say government sources. So there we go, Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez announcing that his government plans to throw some 500 million euros, I believe, at this education issue to help students improve in mathematics and reading comprehension. And this coming after, as we saw in that article, Spain's poor performance in a recent PISA report. And PISA, of course, being the body that evaluates education systems around the world. So we'll see if results in coming years in these two subjects improves here in Spain with this cash injection. Second piece of news, and there's been a lot of talk recently in Spain about reducing the working week, cutting the amount of hours that people have to do legally. And apparently, according to a recent survey, two out of three Spaniards support reducing working hours to 37.5 hours per week. Government coalition partners PSOE and SUMAR have agreed to make a big change that helps about 13 million workers. They promised to reduce the normal week from 40 hours, which has been the standard since 1983, to 30 8.5 hours in 2024 and to 37.5 hours in 2025. Cutting work hours without reducing pay was one of the main election promises of Yolanda Diaz. This reform starts its journey on Thursday with the first meeting about it at the Ministry of Labour and with social partners. Two out of three Spaniards support the government's plan to reduce working hours by two and a half hours a week, according to a survey by 40DB for El País and Cadena Said. So the plan to cut the amount of hours that people work every week from 40, where it currently sits, down to 37.5 by 2025. And no doubt we are working towards a four-day working week. And all this news about reducing the working week comes after the news that we saw last week, how Spain's productivity has fallen in the last 24 years. So a good idea to reduce the working week and will it make people more productive in this country? Don't know, time will tell, and let me know your opinion in the comment section below. The next piece of news now, and an important piece of news as far as motoring is concerned, because the first non-petroleum renewable fuels that can be used in all vehicles arrive in Spain. Renewable fuels over time have become part of our daily lives in Spain and the rest of the world. According to European Union traffic regulations, all fuels, whether diesel or petrol, must have 10% renewable fuel in their composition position, which will increase the 12% by 2026. Repsol is launching a new pilot project in three service stations in Madrid, with which it intends to expand its range of renewable products. It will also start up in 2025 in Puerto Llano, Ciudad Real, the second facility dedicated exclusively to producing biofuels from waste, which will produce 240,000 tonnes of renewable fuels. One of the organic wastes used as feedstock for the production of renewable fuels is used cooking oil. So the first non-petroleum renewable fuels starting to be used at some service stations here in Madrid at least and going to be expanded throughout the country in coming years 
by the company Repsol. And the final piece of news today about Spanish tennis legend Rafael Nadal and the deal that he has done with Saudi Arabia. And let's be honest, it is a deal that is dividing opinion, not only here in Spain, but around the world. And one news outlet is asking the question, will Spain forgive Rafa Nadal for breaking its heart? Is it clear now who Rafa Nadal is? It's a question that fans of the tennis star have been asking on social media after the announcement that Spain's favourite sporting son has inked a deal to become a tennis ambassador for Saudi Arabia. Nadal signed an agreement with the oil-rich Arab country to promote the development of the sport, but more than his actions, it was the statement he made that left Spaniards speechless. Wherever you look, you can see growth and progress here. Money buys everything, supporters asked at first, criticising the lack of human rights in the Gulf state. Now the debate has moved on from social networks to offers corridors, cafeterias and WhatsApp groups. So controversial the signing of Mr Nadal to promote tennis in Saudi Arabia. Another example of sport washing, as they call it, by the Saudis. Let me know your opinion in the comment section below. Was Nadal correct in taking that easy Saudi money or is he just being greedy? I'd love to to hear your take on this topic. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that have been left on the channel recently. One here from Marco. Hey Stu, if from that statement rain is needed for 30 days and 30 nights, then I hope some of the Spanish funding is spent on building an ark. Regards, Marco. Yeah, Marco, thanks for the comment and referring to something that was said by the Andalusian Premier, Mr. Juan Mar Moreno, last week, I think it was, when he said that it needs to rain for 30 days and 30 nights in Andalusia if they want to fix their drought issue. Issues. But as we know, 30 days and nights of continuous rain in that part of Spain, fairly difficult to achieve. So what will that mean for three of the major cities in Andalusia, Córdoba, Sevilla and Malaga? Well, water restrictions, of course. And Mr Moreno also mentioned the other day that people in those cities will have to get used to living with less water. So no need for Mr. Moreno to build an ark just yet, I don't think. One here from Free in Panama. We live in Latin America and we're among those 84 million, but we have been coming to Spain quite regularly for many years. We've never seen crowds as big as last year. No fun at all. It seems the tourism level deteriorated a lot over the years, but it applies to the whole of Europe, not just Spain. It is cheaper than ever and more crowded than ever. It seems like a proletariat style approach that everyone deserves vacation turns vacations to be way less enjoyable than ever. It appears that in order to enjoy more quality vacations, one has to go to Asia or Latin America. Yeah, free in Panama, thanks for the comment, and I will agree with something that you said in that comment, that Europe is a very crowded place indeed, especially in those summer months, and I don't know how people enjoy such crowded tourist destinations, especially some of the big cities here in Spain, for example, Barcelona. As we saw in yesterday's live stream, 84 million was the amount of people that visited Spain last year and free in Panama among those 84 million. But, and as we have seen in recent times on the channel, 84 million international tourists is not enough for some people. Some people want more international visitors to come and the figure being thrown around is over 100 million. So you can imagine what it's going to be like in some parts of Spain in July and August if that figure is ever reached. So maybe it is time for people to start looking at other destinations, for example, Asia and Latin America, as pointed out by that commenter. One here from Rob, my family will four of the 84 million, but as it was our first time visiting, we don't have anything to compare it to. We were there in mid-September, so a little outside the peak season. I didn't find it to be too crowded. For instance, there were no lines at the Prado Museum midweek and never had problems getting on the metro. Hablo suficiente español, así no había problemas para conversar con la gente local. I speak enough Spanish, so there weren't any problems speaking with the locals. Yeah, Rob, thanks for the comment and good to see that you and your family enjoyed your trip to Spain last year, your first trip to the country and you didn't find it too crowded of course coming in September which is not peak tourist season and good to see that you didn't have any problems getting into the Prado Museum one of the main museums in the city of Madrid no queues when you were there and also the Madrid Metro wasn't too crowded and I think mid to late September early October the best time to visit the city of Madrid because it's not too hot and as you pointed out there there's not too many 
people, which is a pro. One here from Gold Geologist. Salaries and cost of living issues are a problem in many parts of the world currently. Yeah, Gold Geologist, thanks for the comment, and you're absolutely right. Salaries, low salaries, and the cost of living problems in many countries currently. In fact, recently, when I was in Australia, you see the same stories in the press down there, talking about those very two things. So it's not only Spain that suffers from this issue, other countries, as you point out, do too. And wouldn't it be fantastic to live in a world where these two issues didn't exist? We can only but dream. One here from Lynn Chetz. Greenhouses in Almeria are taking water by well, which they drill deeper and deeper every year when they should be running off desalination plants. They don't get water from the sea because it's expensive compared to free well water, but that causes water shortages in the area. Yeah, Lynn Chetz, thanks for the comment and talking about those greenhouses down there in the province of Almeria in the autonomous community of Andalusia. Anybody who has been to that part of Spain will have no doubt seen the greenhouses there because let's be honest, they are impossible to miss. And I mentioned this in yesterday's live stream, the time that I went to Alameda a couple of years ago, I was blown away by that plastic sea. And you only have to go to Google Maps and take a look at Alameda from above to get an idea of the agriculture that is going on in that part of the country. And basically it's plastic greenhouses for as far as the eye can see. But as we know, that part of Spain is Europe's market garden. A lot of the produce that they consume in the north of Europe comes from Almeria, tomatoes, pepper, cucumbers and the like. And it's a very powerful industry which has a lot of clout in local politics. But as we know, water usage here in Spain, especially water used for agriculture, a hot potato politically. So we'll see if farmers are forced to change their techniques or their habits when it comes to water usage. Time will tell. And a final comment from Stevo on the same topic. I found this on the internet. In Spain, the agricultural sector accounts for 82.1% of water use. Households use 12.8% and the remaining 5.1% is used for other economic activities. From Caixa Bank Research. Yes, Stevo, thanks for the comment. And that basically sums it up. 82.1% of fresh water usage in this country is used for agriculture culture, a very thirsty industry indeed. And as I said a minute ago, a hot potato politically, given the fact that a lot of dams in the south of Spain are starting to run dry. But have no fear because the likes of Pedro Sanchez and Juanma Moreno are on the case. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.